Just to show you that the white media's complete and thorough hysteria over Bill Cosby is all about race and not about any alleged sexual impropriety, you got Louis C.K., who was supposed to be the subject of a documentary that Showtime was going to be putting out. Now keep in mind, Showtime is also the same network, the exact same network, that put out the anti-Cosby hit piece slander, We Need to Talk About Cosby. And what did David Nevins, Paramount's global executive, say about this Louis C.K. documentary? What was on Paramount's mind when they originally said they were going to put this out? David Nevins said, I don't think the social change that Me Too has brought about is resolved at all. There's a bit of a backlash against Me Too, who has to go away and who's allowed to come back. Actually, it's very well known who has to go away, any black man who's been accused of anything, and as for who's allowed to come back, the same people who always are allowed to come back. Take, for example, Mel Gibson. He's had a ton of scandals for racist remarks about black people, which doesn't get mentioned by the white media, anti-Semitic remarks, which does occasionally, and his alleged violence against his partner. And yet, Robert Downey Jr. himself personally vouched for him in front of the entire world, absolving Mel of his sins. Nobody says a word about his anti-black racism, though. But that's okay, because Danny Glover says it's cool. He wants to do another Lethal Weapon movie with him. Denzel did a roundtable discussion with Gibson, and so did that guy who made the LGBT film Moonlight. So that means Gibson's anti-black racism must not be a problem. All is forgiven, right? Or so says the white media. See, when it's non-black men we're talking about, when it comes to any scandal, no matter how big, it's just allowed to fall down the memory hole, never to be mentioned again. But when it's a black man, there's no accusation that's too flimsy, too ridiculous, or so long ago that it won't be the first thing the white media mentions whenever that black man is doing an interview or his name gets brought up. Nate Parker was falsely accused of rape and put on trial in the South by a white jury, and he was acquitted. A young, athletic black man falsely accused of rape by a white woman, tried by a white jury, and found innocent. He was tried not by a jury of his peers, but by the friends, relatives, and neighbors of the woman who accused him. And they said this black man's innocent. Now, if that doesn't certify his innocence, then nothing will, especially not with the white media, because they sent Robin Roberts no less. You gotta get a black person to do the dirt. And she went to smear this man because white executives in Hollywood hated that he was making a movie about Nat Turner. There were no white saviors in this flick. And they did the same thing to Kobe Bryant. That man and his daughter had barely been declared dead before you had trash like Gail King bringing up the false rape accusations against him. Now, they weren't bringing it up to Kobe Bryant, of course, because he was dead. But they're like, let's talk to some of these black women over here. Let's see if we can get some WNBA women to speak against him because the men won't. So let's see if we can get them to do it. Well, that didn't work, but the point was that's what they were trying to do. Again, you had a black man proven innocent of a lie against him, and yet you had the white media and their flunkies still pushing that, well, he must have been guilty of something. Even if he's not, let's talk about him like he was. Okay, so when Mel Gibson shows up, who's still throwing what he's actually done in his face? If black men continue to get raked over the coals for things they didn't do, then why is it that we're not calling out any of these white celebrities for things they actually did? Where's the feminist at to protest Gibson and to call out the well-founded allegations of domestic violence? And all of these so-called white feminist females in Hollywood, they're silent too. And nobody in the white media is making any documentaries about Mel Gibson. Absolutely nobody was doing any rise and fall of Mel Gibson documentaries or even news pieces. Now, they already made up their minds, as long as he's trashing black people, that's cool. This David Nevin guy from Paramount also said that Louis C.K. is a slightly different situation to Harvey Weinstein and a great, great comedian who has come back in his own way. Now, you see what they did there? Louis C.K. is different from Harvey Weinstein and then just outright praise. They go from minimizing what he did to then immediately in the exact same sentence saying he's a great, great comedian. Talk about a whitewash. Actually, an outright lie because Harvey Weinstein did the exact same things that Louis C.K. did. There's no slightly different situation here. Harvey Weinstein also was running around exposing his genitals to female colleagues every chance he got, which is the exact same thing that Louis C.K. was doing. And they call this admitted sexual predator, Louis C.K., a great, great comedian. These are the people who were supposed to be producing the documentary about him. So they're already showing you where they stand when it comes to this guy. 
They're not talking like objective media figures who are doing an examination of Louis C.K. and the scandals against him. They're talking like his cheerleading squad, like his PR team, because that's what they are. The white media is not an objective group of neutral observers. They are a dyed-in-the-wool, biased, prejudiced group of anti-black racists, and they're putting it on full display with this one. All of this laudatory praise and all of this deflecting and diminishing and minimalization that they were doing for Louis C.K., did they talk that way about Bill Cosby? Because Bill Cosby has also been trying to make a comeback, and he's a hell of a lot funnier than Louis C.K. will ever be. Keep in mind, these are the people who are supposed to be putting out this Louis C.K. documentary who are saying all this. And speaking of Bill Cosby, do you know what I noticed was missing from this exclusive article by Variety? Bill Cosby's name. It's not in the article. In fact, it's not in any of the articles about Showtime not carrying this lousy CK documentary. Isn't that strange? Now, as we all know, for the last five plus years, at least, the white media has shoehorned Cosby's name into any and every article, TV piece, or anything else talking about sexual harassment, Me Too, whatever. They throw his name in there no matter what, even when it clearly doesn't belong. If a white celebrity or high-profile white man is being accused of something, Cosby's name will bizarrely be mentioned in the piece anyway. Most of the time, they don't even mention Harvey Weinstein, but you can bet Cosby's name will be thrown in there simply because they have to sling some mud on a black man. That's their narrative. And the omission of Cosby's name becomes doubly strange because Paramount owns Showtime, the company that put out the slanderous anti-Cosby lie, we need to talk about Cosby. So here they are a year later, and they're talking about another comedian, this time a white one, and they don't mention Cosby's name at all, even though this is basically the exact same kind of documentary, allegedly, that they have just put out about Bill Cosby. That's because this is about making sure that you don't give Louis C.K. the Cosby treatment. This is about the white media conditioning the public that when a non-black person is accused of something, well, you can't just throw them away. You can't treat them like you do an innocent black person. This is about making sure that an admitted sexual degenerate has his image rehabilitated. It is a double standard, clearly, and that's the point. It is supposed to be a blatantly clear double standard. That is white privilege. This is to reinforce who gets to come back and who doesn't, and to make it clear it's based on race. And remember, it wasn't just Variety that refused to mention Cosby's name in their coverage of the dropping of this Louis C.K. documentary. It was the entire white media as a group who isn't mentioning his name. All of them are making sure that when they repost this Variety article, or they do what basically amounts to a thinly veiled rewording of it, they all make sure not to mention Cosby's name. And they definitely don't mention that Showtime made a documentary about Cosby just last year. This is just like the white media's completely coordinated blackout on mentioning Daniel Penny's name. For nearly two weeks, the white media knew who this killer was, but they all across the board had an agreement that they were not going to publish his name. Recognize when you're seeing a coordinated white media narrative being pushed on you. And nobody's talking about Kamal Bill either. His name hasn't come up at all either. And he seems to be silent on this one too. Gee, he was the one who Showtime hired to be their black front dummy for that Cosby hit piece. Shouldn't he have been the one lobbying for the job to go after Louis C.K. too? Because after all, as Kamal Bell said, this is about men abusing their power. Oh, wait, that's not what he said. What he said was about black men abusing their power. That's what he was saying. So they're making it real blatant. Even Kamal Dumbbell won't stick his empty head up on this one. The white media that he whores himself to, they've made it very clear he better stay in his place. And that's what a bootlick does. They stay in their place. And by the way, as far as the coverage of Cosby's name being omitted from any mention of Louis C.K.'s documentary, it didn't just happen this year. When you look at the Variety article from last year, that's 10 months ago. When Paramount announced this puff piece, there was also no mention of the Cosby documentary in that announcement either. In the white media, they don't do coverage. They do cover-ups. The racial double standard. They didn't suddenly forget that Showtime made that Cosby documentary just a year ago. You read their article from last year, and they weren't mentioning Cosby then either. Because this is white media propaganda. You bring up a black man as a racial shield to hide behind, so that when a white man's accused of something, you can go ahead and mention a black man, and it creates the false impression with everybody that there's some sort of equivalence going on. Here's my questions for all the little white supremacist morons who infest my channel and Twitter feed. 
Do you think if you keep saying stupid stuff like reverse racism all the time, that it will lose its meaning? Wait a minute, nobody ever took reverse racism seriously in the first place, so you see what happens when you lie. White supremacists are weak, especially their brains, if they could be called that. You have never seen anyone making a documentary about a black man's fall and rise, have you? Because that was the entire theme of Paramount's Louis C.K. documentary. This was going to be his fall and rise. Every time you see a documentary about a black man, it is always about his rise and fall. See, that's one of the narratives white power reinforces when it comes to black people. It's a propaganda tactic that goes all the way back to the Romans. See, that's who the Europeans learned it from. Who are the two notable rebel leaders that you know of from ancient Rome? You had Spartacus and Boudicca. Both of them raised armies to fight the Romans' occupation in their lands, and both of them were killed in the end. You see, when the Romans taught that story to the colonized people that they were oppressing, they didn't do it as a celebration of freedom fighters, but that's how it was presented. And at least that's definitely how it's shown in modern times, as a celebration of courage and valor, etc. But the main point that gets across is that if you resist occupation, if you resist the dominant society, you'll lose, and most likely be killed. And they reinforce the same ideas here in the U.S., from John Henry, even to Nat Turner. I'm not besmirching Nat Turner. My respect for our great freedom fighter is abiding. But my point is, you notice how they don't teach you about all the black freedom fighters who fought white supremacy, killed white supremacists, and lived. They don't want that idea to become habit-forming. They want to indoctrinate you with the idea that if you call yourself resisting white power, well, it's going to fail. See, these white media narratives are not harmless. They are a form of brainwashing, and these documentaries are done as another form of it. They don't show you black men embroiled in a scandal, and then some white media outlet does a piece celebrating their comeback. You have never seen that. Michael Jackson was attacked day and night, but he was still going on tour, still selling out arenas, still making number one hits. So where were the documentaries talking about the fall and rise of Michael Jackson? It's not because they couldn't get access to him. It's because they wanted to demonize the man because it was black. It was about pushing that anti-black racist narrative. Remember that interview Michael Jackson did with Martin Bashir, the British hack journalist? Martin Bashir was Pierce Morgan before Pierce Morgan came along. But Bashir put out that hit piece, and all throughout his narration of it, he was talking about Michael Jackson like a dog. At least, that's what he put on air. But then Michael and his people revealed that they had recordings of their own that were being done while Bashir was conducting his interview. And what a surprise! Martin Bashir had been praising Michael Jackson, at least to his face, during the interview. Praising him about the very things which, during the aired version of the interview, he attacked Michael for. So this is not about the facts. It never has been. It's about reinforcing and pushing an anti-black narrative. And the higher profile the black man is the greater the target he becomes, and the greater the lies they have to tell. Jerry Lee Lewis committed statutory rape and incest, but that's okay. He was allowed to go ahead and live that down. Why, he went back to touring as if nothing had happened. David Bowie had sex with underage girls. No big deal. Les Moonves has been accused of sexual assault by at least a half dozen women, and Julie Chen boldly went on air and proclaimed to the entire world that she's standing beside her man. There's no documentaries about Moonves. No prosecutors are doing what they did to Cosby and try to help set him up for a civil case against him. Julie Chen's not made into a pariah for standing beside her sugar daddy, er, I mean husband. She doesn't lose her job. Nothing happens to her. She's not scandalized at all. Not like Camille Cosby. All the high-profile actors and writers and directors and showrunners and such who had worked at CBS during the decades, plural decades, that Les Moonves was in charge of CBS signing people's paychecks, or in the case of a number of black people, he was signing their pink slips, and yet nobody in the white media makes it a point to run up into any of those CBS celebrities' faces and relentlessly ask them if they denounce any of the things that Les Moonves was accused of. Nobody's getting in their faces and saying, let's popularize denouncing these guys. They don't do that if the accused is white. Nowhere are they mentioning any of Louis C.K.'s colleagues and saying, oh, we can't stand this guy. We got to distance ourselves from this guy. I can't believe he's... They're not doing that to him. Nobody is making primetime stars out of any of his accusers either. They're not giving them wall-to-wall -wall anything. Gloria Allred's not parading them from the cameras, and neither is her daughter. It's all a white media con. This is what Me Too and Time's Up were all about. For the first time ever, you had white men who were being put in scandalous headline after scandalous headline, so the white media that they own and control coordinated and decided that they were going to stop reporting on that. 
oh, we've decided we're not talking about these white men anymore. We're only going to talk about black ones. We're going to talk about Bill Cosby or R. Kelly or Michael Jackson, even though he's long since been dead for several years. Hey, a black man who's not able to defend himself in any way, those are the best targets. I can't put the white media's anti-black racial bias any clearer than this. When they throw it in your face that the exact same cable network will make two documentaries about two different comedians regarding the exact same two circumstances, only one of them, they're chronicling his fall and rise and talking about how this guy is different than Harvey Weinstein. And the other one, they're calling him every name in the book but a child of God, demonizing him five ways from Sunday, and the only difference is the color of their skin. They're showing you exactly what they're all about. They're going out of their way to stick up for a man who admitted what he did, and they went out of their way to demonize Bill Cosby, who has maintained his innocence and proved himself innocent in court. Well, I don't know about you, but this racist white media propaganda isn't funny at all. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Gwendolyn Langston, Chaz, Charles Hobson, Brian Horton, and Miss Debbie. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.